Hey everybody, it's Bruce and the Dog on the Floor, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the Query API for Ecto and conceptually where it fits into our CRC pattern. That's Construct, Reduce, and Convert. This is going to be an interesting conversation. We're not actually going to write much code, but I hope you'll get a feel for kind of where everything fits in the scheme of things and where you're going to place each bit of code as you work with database queries. So let's get started. So we're going to start with the premise that there, there are a couple of processes or maybe modules or functions. And one of the processes has a query, has something that it wants. And then it basically composes the query and then asks the other process or module. And then that other process or module returns whatever it is. And so this is essentially what we're going to do with Ecto, but there are a couple of things that are going to complicate this flow. So when, when I say I want it, I'm really talking about a query and there's some kind of API that's going to allow me to ask, right? And so maybe that's repo.all or repo.first. We don't really care yet what that looks like, but the Basically, the idea is that there is some type of API that we're going to use to kind of feed a query. So in most persistence frameworks, or at least a lot of them, the idea of a query is a pretty fat one. So here's what I mean. I'm going to build a lot of information into this. And since I'm not necessarily sending this to a local process, What's going to happen is that when we include this idea of a map or some, some great world or a cloud or some kind of inter intermediary that takes the database engine further away, then it's going to complicate our whole flow, right? It's actually going to push the other party off so that we don't even see them. And we're actually dealing with this other layer or an API. And then we have this API where we're going to ask a question. So who are we making the request of? So that's maybe a kind of the, the database configuration. And then where, what actual database does this data live in? And then there's actually aspects of what type of data are we turning? You know, for example, what are the, the rows or tables that we're going against? Which rows do we want back and which columns? And, and how do we return the results? How do we shape it? What's the structure? What's the order and the quantity? But all of these things are kind of a lot to build into a single API. And in fact, Ecto doesn't, doesn't actually structure the API this way, right? Because it takes that group of things on the bottom and it says, okay, this is query data, and that's important because this data is relatively pure. It's It has a certain amount of certainty to it, and we can deal with it in an API called Ecto Query, right? And then we're going to take these other things, the things at the top of this list, the database connection configuration, and, and a wrapper around the database itself. And we're going to say, okay, that's the database. And when we build these ask type functions, whether that's repo.all or repo.last or things like that, we're going to separate those calls between the uncertain, the things that deal with the database itself and the, the query data, the certain piece of it, the, the part that is that we can use the, the Elixir functional language to our advantage to solve. The database is going to have an abstraction that's basically the repo for your application. And the query is going to have the abstraction of ecto.query. And since these are structs, we're going to be able to deal with them in, in the way that's appropriate for the individual API. And since, since the repo can potentially fail, we're going to put that work, that code in the boundary so that we could deal with the exceptions or with the tagged tuples and basically be explicit about the way that we handle the errors. And then we're going to put the other bits of data in the core, right? And we're going to manage those query data because we can essentially formulate the requests that, that we're actually looking for in a relatively certain way, actually in a completely certain way, 
after we've scrubbed the user data that goes into asking those questions. And that's, that's a pretty interesting thing. And I want to talk a little bit more about the idea of the core. As you've followed along with Groxio, you've probably seen this unfolding pattern called CRC. And that really stands for Construct, Reduce, and Convert, where we take this type of data. And in this case, the type of data is an ecto query. Or more specifically, it starts with a queryable that can be converted to an ecto query. We're going to take that, we're going to build this out of convenient inputs this construction of, of a data structure called an accumulator. And then we're going to do a little bit of work, one reducer at a time. So one step at a time, we're going to take that query and we're going to shape it. We're going to add a little, a little bit of refinement in every single function. And that's going to take an ecto query and return an ecto query. And then when we're done with that, we're going to convert it to the data that our application is going to use. Well, as you might have guessed by now, that conversion step is actually going to happen in the boundary, right? So the conversion is going to be with something like a repo.all. And so that's how we are going to work with Ecto queries across this CRC framework and with a clean separation between the things that can fail, the things that encapsulate uncertainty with the application's repository or repo and with the things that are more certain, like the building of an individual query that we can actually wrap with the ecto.query struct. And that's really going to allow us to build beautiful layered software that lets us deal with the appropriate level of complexity all at once. And that's really an excellent thing. From Bruce and the dog on the floor, this is Groxio Learning. <laughs>